All right, let's take a look at GSRT6. <clears throat> this video deals with concepts with uh, Worksheet 1 and Worksheet 2. And ultimately, uh, this material is all about what we uh, will be calling trigonometry. Now, some students uh, hear the word trigonometry and find it fairly intimidating, just like when we say calculus. But um, in the word trig o nom -me -tri, there's really two hidden words. This means triangle, tri, and metri means measure. So really, uh, all this is is about all of the things about triangle measurements. And trigonometry is the first time, really, we kind of connect information about angles to information about sides. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem was kind of an, uh, about sides, other things were about angles, uh, sums of angles, sizes of angles, things like that. This is the first time we're going to kind of connect the two, which makes it a, a very powerful thing and a very useful thing in the real world as well. One of the things that we have to do first is talk about the naming of sides because we're going to talk about ratios in these so the first thing is usually, uh, or always, in trigonometry where you have a reference angle and then everything gets named based off of that. In a right triangle, of course, this is always the hypotenuse, no matter what the reference angle is. The adjacent side um, is always the one beside the angle. Now you say, well, so is the hypotenuse. You're right. The adjacent and the hypotenuse will always form the reference angle. But you know which one's the hypotenuse, so you know which one's adjacent. Now, across the triangle will always be known as the opposite side. So the opposite side um, is directly opposite or across the triangle. Now, if we change the reference angle location to, say, be in angle C's corner instead of in angle A's, you'll notice that some of the labeling changes. The hypotenuse, of course, does not change its location. The opposite is now over here. Take a look. Opposite is across the triangle, and that makes this our adjacent side. So I guess the first thing I want to mention to you in trigonometry, we're going to relate ratios to angle sizes, and how we label it is very, very important. Now, at the very heart of uh, trigonometry is the use of ratios and uh, how ratios can help us know things about uh, side lengths and such of, of triangles. Now even though you haven't learned trigonometry, your information about similarity um, and the special right triangles has kind of already prepared you for this idea. Let me show you what I mean. Here are three similar triangles. They're similar by AA. And uh, in that they are similar, it provides us a chance to know that the sides are proportional. Now you and I also learned that there are proportions or specific ratios of sides in a 30-60-90 triangle. And they are that the hypotenuse is double and the short side, or sorry, long side in this case, is root 3 times bigger. Here, this would be 10 centimeters double and times root 3 would be 5 root 3. Here we would be 16 and we would be 8 root 3. No real tricks here, but I want you to understand that really by knowing that this was a 30 degree right triangle, it allowed us to get the lengths of sides. Do you see how the angle informed us about the sides? That's going to be a very common theme. Now what I want to do next with these three triangles is set up a couple ratios and look at again how um, things uh, turn out to have some nice relationships. So in all three of these I'm going to compare the opposite side to the hypotenuse and they're all in terms of the reference of the 30 degree angle. So let me quickly label opposite and such. So opposite will be here, of course this is hypotenuse, this is adjacent. Opposite hypotenuse adjacent, opposite hypotenuse and adjacent. 
So what I'm going to compare to start is this ratio between these two sides. And um, it works out to be very nice. It's a 3 to 6 in this case. Opposite to hypotenuse here works out to be 5 to 10. And opposite to hypotenuse here works out to be 8 to 16. Now you can see, just as I can, that these are all equal to 0 0.5. So the, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse side in a 30 degree right triangle will always be a half. Uh, that's nothing new, that's special right triangle ratios. Same thing kind of would have happened if we compare adjacent to hypotenuse. So the adjacent would be uh, 3 root 3 over 6. Uh, here it would be um, in a similar ratio, 5 root 3 over 10. So again, we're now comparing these two sides. And here the adjacent to the hypotenuse would be uh, 8 root 3 is to 16. Now, for the sake of um, a reason later, I'm going to turn these into a decimal. So I'm just picking up my calculator and I'm going to take 3 square root 3 and divide it by 6 and I get 0 0.866 but I'll just put 8.7 for now. I'll do the same calculation with the next one. I think you know what to expect though that these would be these would come out to be uh, the same and certainly they all do come out to be the same. So we're getting what we expect. The ratios of all three similar triangles are the same. Of course, they're proportional. There's a purpose to this. Follow me through. Finally, I'm going to compare the opposite to the adjacent. I'm going to compare the final ones that we haven't compared yet. Now, basically, I've created all three ratios here. So this would be 3 to 3 root 3. Uh, this opposite to this adjacent would be uh, 5 to 5 root 3. This opposite to this adjacent would be equal to 8 to 8 root 3. And again, for the sake of uh, uh, an ex exercise in just a minute, I would like to quickly calculate this on my calculator. And I get about 0.5, let's see, what does it come out to? About 0.58. And all of them come out to be about that. All right. So what we're learning, and maybe we already knew it, and that would be great because this is a nice segue into trig, but I compared two sides of these three similar triangles, and I got the same three answers. I did it again and again. Well, really, this is the preparation of what it means to, uh, what trigonometry means, is that, um, each of these ratios that I just created, I'm going to give a name. The first one I created, I'm going to call it the sine ratio, and it will always compare the opposite to the hypotenuse. Now, I know you look at this and say it's sin. Its actual full word is sine, and, uh, but we write it S-I-N as an abbreviation. But the sine ratio for an angle is comparing the opposite to the hypotenuse. So this has a name, this ratio has a name. It's when I compare opposite to hypotenuse, it's called the sine ratio. We're gonna give this one a name too, it's called cosine. Um, and again, it has an abbreviation that I've write, I'm writing here, but its full name is cosine, okay? So we write it abbreviated in a formula form which says the cosine of some angle is an adjacent to hypotenuse. And then the final, the third ratio, the third grouping is called tangent, and it compares opposite to adjacent, and its full name is tangent. Now, what we just did here is that we found that the sine ratio of a 30 degree triangle, 30 degree right triangle, will come out to be 0.5. So we found the sine ratio of a 30 degree triangle we think will come out to be 0.5 every time. 
and we think that the cosine ratio of a 30 degree triangle will come out to 0 0.87 every time and that the tangent of a 30 degree right triangle will come out to be uh, 0.58 each time. So the idea is see how things are starting to relate to each other if I know the angle I can know the ratio of those two sides, those ones in particular. If I know the angle, I can get another ratio and so on. So, do you see how the angle is connecting to the ratio or vice versa, the ratio would connect us to that angle. Now this is really the heart of trigonometry. The idea that we could know an angle and from that know its values. Now, Actually, let me go to the top of this table. This is called a trig table. And what it is, is it has a table that has the angles in integers and their three ratios. Because every, um, every triangle, right triangle, uh, will have a similarity about it to other triangles. And those ratios would be maintained. So here's what we did. We looked at a 30 degree right triangle. You and I found it to be 0.5, right on. We had rounded this one a bit, but there it is, 0.866, and this one, 0.5774. Do you understand what these three ratios represent? They're not just foreign items. Here they are back here. That what they were is when we talk about the sine ratio, we're talking about the ratio between those two sides, cosine between these two, and tangent between these two. So what's cool about trigonometry is that we can say, well, what happens? What are the three ratios if you have a 42 degree triangle, 42 degree right triangle? So here's 42, here's its sine ratio, here's its cosine ratio, and here is its tangent ratio. These are unique. Um, there's only one set of types of triangles or one angle that uh, in, a 40, in a 42 right degree, right triangle, um, will have these three ratios and none others. So this is how it can work. Let's say you knew that the tangent ratio of two sides in a right triangle came out to 0 0.286. What you could do is you could say, oh, I have the tangent ratio of 0.286. Ah, that's my ratio right there of opposite to adjacent. And you could run over and say, the angle must be 16 degrees. Do you see how it's working both ways? I could say, oh, it's a 70 degree triangle. What's its cosine ratio? Oh, there's the ratio between the adjacent and the hypotenuse. I could work backwards. I could say, what happens uh, if I knew that the, the sine ratio was 0 0.777? Hmm, 0.777. Ah, the angle must be 51 degrees. Okay? So this table, while it looks a little um, cryptic, maybe, to some of you, is very, very powerful. Because what it allows us to do is know an know an angle size and it provides us those ratios for any kinds of situations. Now what I want to do maybe just for a minute, just to finish this up, is to talk about um, a couple of other interesting things that maybe we need to look at. Here at 45 degrees uh, we have two, the sine and the cosine values are the same and tangent is equal to one is kind of interesting because you're like, wait a minute, why would those values be the same and, and then why would tangent be 1? Well, let's talk about this. What's a 45 degree right triangle look like? Let's take a look at it. Here it is, a 45 degree right triangle. So, what do we know about a 45 right triangle? Oh, it's our special right triangle. And what's its relationship? Okay. These sides are always the same. Let's give them some number, like 3 and 3. And I know the hypotenuse. That would be 3 root 2. So let's check it out. Let's check these ratios out. What would be the 
uh, tangent ratio. What would be the tangent of 45? That's uh, opposite to adjacent. Oh, that would be 3 divided by 3. Hey, that's 1. There it is. And what would be the sine ratio of a 45 degree? That would be opposite over hypotenuse. That would be this one divided by that one. And I bet that comes out to 0.7071. Uh, Wait a minute, that's also why cosine comes out to be the same answer, because the adjacent and the opposite happen to be the same in this one, so that makes sense now. There's lots of cool uh, properties found in this table to help you understand more about trigonometry. That'll be our first part.